everyone, welcome to the Ladies Club, South Africa's top women's sports talk show. This is where we get up close and personal with your favorite sports icons and talk all about their lives, their careers, and so much more. My name is Valen Kirtley, and I'm so happy to be with you. October, of course, is Breast Awareness Month, and we would like to encourage you to support all those battling with cancer during this time. The Ladies Club, and we do that with amazing conversations. But she's going to be absolutely phenomenal. social media yarona eling at spotted SABC seventy song hashtag the ladies club Twitter look off Facebook at Lebumut Swedi at Baden Kirtley. As you've heard already, today we're gonna to be focusing on women who are excelling on the golfing front. Now historically golf has been a man sport. Some are even saying that uh, golf is an acronym for gentlemen only ladies yeah. are forbidden but today we see quite a few ladies paving the way for young women golfers absolutely and while the numbers on women in golf are currently encouraging it's just equally inspiring to see women of color now mm -hmm. enter the friend our game changer she is the new kid on the block and is taking the world of golf by storm. Yeah, she'll tell us a little bit more about her exciting journey as a golfer, moving from East London to Johannesburg to pursue her golfing dreams. But to get us off on the right note for today's program, let's pay respect to a lady that has some incredible staying power when it comes to golf. 43-year-old Carrie Webb, who has 41 wins on the LPGA. Now, that's more than any other active player currently. She won Rookie of the Year in her very first year. That was back in the mid-90s. Mm. And she's been a three-time to a money winner. She's been really incredible because the Australian golfer plays mainly on the LPGA Tour and also turns out once or twice a year on the ALPG Tour in her home country. Well, let's get the show underway as we always do with an inspiring quote. Absolutely. So this one goes like this. Women's economic empowerment is absolutely essential to gender equality. It's a matter of basic fairness that women are able to fully and equally participate in the economy. With a livelihood and an income of their own, women have increased status, can provide for their families, and become empowered in other parts of their lives as well, such as making decisions about education, housing, food choices, and medical care. That comes from the executive director of UN Women, Pumzile Mlambo Nguka, also our former oh, deputy president of South Africa. Absolutely adore her. One of my favorite women in the country who's doing amazing work. She is, of course, a South African politician and United Nations official who currently serves as the executive director of the UN Women with the rank of Under Secretary General of the United Nations. She served as, you said, the Deputy President of South Africa back from 2005 to 2008 and she still blazed the trail as the very first woman, Munawa Africa Bura, to hold that position, becoming the highest ranking woman in the history of South Africa. I think what's great about the quote that she gives is that uh allow women to be yes. economically empowered and I yeah. think that uh, on the sports front that's exactly what we're yeah. always speaking about just give yeah. women the opportunity to mm. be empowered on the sports front give them equal opportunities and you'll see what good comes in your communities and in your society and it's all about economic freedom once you empower women to have that economic mm -hmm. freedom they're able to make their own decisions live the way they want to live and really not be dependent on anyone else so it's very important I'm feeling fired up I can't yeah. wait to speak to our young game changer because she has got uh, an amazing story and I can't wait to get in conversation with her so get your fingers ready to get involved in the conversation too on social media but we'll have all of that when we return with our guest Zeto Miyaki after the break. Alright, we're going to be introducing to our game changer in just a short while, but we just want to bring you up to speed with uh, some news yes. from the women's sporting front. After successfully retaining the Qatar for Women's Championship crown, Banyana Banyana will now shift their focus to the 2018 Africa Women's Cup 
of Nations. It's scheduled to get underway from the 17th of November to the 1st of December. Absolutely proud of them because they won the Kosafa Cup last month after, after defeating Cameroon, Gadin Tlatsepedu, who a won it at Wilson Stadium. Hosokwana go Port Elizabeth. All right, let's introduce our game changer. Zeto Miyeki, welcome onto the Ladies Club. It's so good for you to join us today. Thank you for having me. All right, Mplele Khorina, why golf? You're now in your 20s, you're an amateur South African golfer, and you've been traveled the world with this amazing career. Why golf? Because you played, the first hit was on a <laughs> soccer pitch. Um, it, was, it was love at first sight, I mean, because I mean, when I was doing grade seven, so every time when I came back from, from school, I used to pass the soccer field. So I saw girls there hitting balls with a guy, but I was scared to go and ask what to do. Mm. Um, and luckily, one of the girls was in the soccer field. She was in the same class as me um, the following year. So I asked her what to do when you're not playing. She invited me to the field, and the rest is history. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I, yeah. I mean, what, where did golf come to to where you grew up. I mean, how, how did that all, all happen? I understand you're from Mdansane where it's yeah. really boxing yeah. and football. Yeah. yeah. No, they, they always had um, golf there because, I mean, um, South African Golf Development, Development Board, um, so they always had um, golf um, in, in Dansane. So that's, that's where I saw, I saw golf. Wow. Now, you also currently ranked third in the country and you've held this position um, as an amateur South African uh, golfer for since 2016. Yeah. How difficult was it to get there because you moved from 55th to third? Um, it, was, it was so difficult, but for me, I feel like before um, being number three in South Africa, yeah. um, I didn't get to play most tournaments because, I mean, I didn't have... Um, finances to, to play them but like when I joined the NLs again in 2015 that's when I started competing mm. and that's when um, I improved so yeah. Mm. Tell us about that big move that you made at the beginning of this year. I mean I've, I've always wanted to, to move from East London but um, I always felt, felt like the timing was not right because um, I mean I couldn't just move I had to speak with the NLs I had to speak with my family and um, East London Golf Club because I'm doing golf club management so and I was doing my practicals at East London so like a lot of people that I had to speak with um, before I made my move so that's why I like um, I couldn't do it back then but um, last year um, um, Judy, because um, every time I come to Jobek, um, I used to stay with her. So she approached me last year in December and um, I couldn't turn down the offer. That's, I just <laughs> yeah. You just moved? Yeah, I just moved. Now, a lot of our viewers are obviously hearing you saying Ernie Earls, that's the big E's, one of the greatest South African golfers. Um, how did you become part of the Big Easy Foundation, the Ernie Els Foundation, who's obviously enabled you to, to grow your career to this far? Um, I think um, the NLs, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be where I am without without their help. Um, obviously, I'm so grateful that I'm part of, of, of the NL Foundation. Um, I think um, the CEO, the CEO of the NLs, um, mm. I mean, he, he goes um, all over and obviously looks for talent. But I met him through my coach, um, Michelle DeFres, um, back at East London, and that's how I basically joined the foundation. Wow. Uh, yeah. You've won... In Mpumalanga, the Mpumalanga Championships, yes, 2017. Last year. Uh, Eastern Province Championships, which is uh, home province in 2018. Yeah. Second yeah. in the Limpopo Championships. Uh, everything that has helped you to get up mm. uh, the the Women's Golf South Africa rankings up to third. What's been your best achievements? What's been the most special so far? Um, representing South Africa in, in 2016. Um, that's when I got my colours. Um, for, for South Africa, so we went to Tunisia um, in 2016. That was the best um, experience ever. Tell us a little bit more about Tunisia. Yeah, because that's the All Africa Challenge, correct? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the All Africa Challenge. Um, so um, how they select the team, they look on like how you've been performing throughout the years and like um, they select the team from there. So, I mean, being the first black female to actually represent South Africa, um, it makes me humble and honored. 
All right, we're definitely honored to have you in studio. I know there's still plenty to talk about, mm -hmm. but uh, what we always look forward to uh, on the show today is a trailblazer. It's that special part of the show where we zoom in on a lady who has also blazed the trail in uh, the sporting world. And our superstar today, Valen, is Leanne Pace. Born in Paul, Western Cape, Leanne started playing golf professionally in 2005, playing on the second tier Dura Med Futures Tour before qualifying for the LPGA Tour. Absolutely. She made her breakthrough back in 2010 with five wins at the Dutch Bank Ladies Swiss Open. And the, the story continues with the S4C Wells Ladies Championships of Europe. But I wonder what impact the likes of Leanne Pace has had on you. Do you have a woman golfer in mind that perhaps has inspired you, Zay, too? Um, I like Shen Shen Feng. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like the way she carries herself um, on the golf course. So, yeah. She's, that's who you look for. That's you look up to. Look, yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's made a lot of history for her she country is. and I suppose yeah. that's something that inspires you. Yeah. Do you feel that you've you've got that thing that you also want to achieve? You want to be the first black South African golfer to do a whole bunch of things? Mm. Definitely. I mean, for me now, because I'm still an amateur, like the goal, like my biggest goal at the moment would be number one in South Africa as an amateur. And obviously turning pro one day is, is one of the dreams. Mm. Now, you, you talk, you're you saying that you're an amateur, and I know before before we started the show, I was asking you, when exactly would you like to turn pro? For those that don't necessarily understand the two, um, is it an important step for you to eventually one day turn pro, or just not as yet? Um, yes, it is important, but um, for me to turn pro, I want to get my degree first, because I'm, I'm doing golf club management, and next day it's my, it's my last year. Mm. So, I mean, once I get my degree, um, then I'll start thinking about turning pro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have played uh, a couple of events, one or two events, on the uh, Sunshine Ladies yeah. tour. Yeah. And, and how has that experience been for you? Because that's been a taste of what pro golf would be like. Um, it's, it's a great experience. I mean, I feel like... Um, the pros, I mean, Ashley, Simon and them, they're not even like hitting fine, all of that. It's just for them, it's, it's, what is important is the consistency. Because, I mean, um, like 100 meters and I mean, they're going to put it close and all of that. Um, with us, we're still struggling with that. So I guess, I mean, it's because for them, it's, it's the only thing that they do. They're practicing all the time. So, yeah. And how's it been playing alongside South Africa's Daniel Detroit? You guys represented South Africa before. <laughs> oh, the face changes. Uh oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> what is the story there? there? What's such a there? story there? There's definitely a story there. Let's put our papers down. We are ready. No, nah, nah, there's no story, man. Um, <laughs> I think she, she's a great golfer. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's no story behind it. I mean, she's got talent and she's, she's, a, nice, she's a nice person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't expect that. No, no. Not what at all. What are you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> the face says it all. Yeah, okay. the, the face certainly does say it yeah. all. Okay, so what's it going to take then from you to actually be able to turn professional? There are some goals that you mm. want to achieve, getting your degree, you want to, you know, be, mm. um, you want to uh, achieve whatever you want to achieve before you actually turn pro. But it's also going to take a little bit of backing and a little bit of support. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I always say, um, even though, um, I mean, I'm saying next year I'm going to finish my degree and all of that, but that doesn't mean as soon as I get my degree I'm going to turn professional just like that. I mean, you can't turn pro For me, I, I don't see myself turning pro without getting, getting like, a proper sponsorship because, I mean, it's, it's not easy out there. Um, especially in South Africa, there's, I mean, there's not enough money, especially for the ladies. So if I can get a proper sponsor then, yeah. I'm pretty sure you'll be attracting lots of sponsors after this. So ladies and gentlemen, a game changer. When I'm more Nano Larnala, the ladies club again as they to Miyeki. All the way from Danzani to the world. We continue the conversation right after this.
Welcome back. You're watching The Ladies Club. Uh, thank you so much for staying with us. Please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, it's so easy. At Sports at SABC, at Le Mumutswedi, at Bail and Kirtley on uh, Twitter and on Facebook as well as Twitter. You can just use our hashtag, hashtag The Ladies Club. But now let's continue with our guest in studio, Z2, and just also find out a little bit more about who she is off golf, besides golf. When you're not playing golf, who is Z2 Mieke? I mean, when I'm not playing golf, I just like to have just my own time, my own space, and just watch TV at home or go and watch movies with friends. And yeah, that's that's basically me. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you inspired? What keeps you going? Yeah, because I mean, I'm always away and all of that. So when I'm not doing anything, yeah. I feel like just staying at home and just... That's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, who has been the biggest inspiration mm. for you? Because you've given up a lot now to pursue yeah. this dream of, of yeah. playing golf, leaving behind your family and friends in the Eastern Cape, coming to Johannesburg, mm. pursuing your goals. So you've remained very, very focused. Yeah. What's been the big motivating factor for you? Um, I mean, coming coming from, from East London at Mtensane, I mean, it's just like, um, for me, um, the reason why I'm so motivated is just to see myself one day being able to support my family financially. Mm. So that's that's the motivation. All right, let's talk about what 2018 still has in store for you because earlier in February, you won the Eastern Province and Border Amateur Championships and then you were runner-up um, at the Sunshine Ladies Tour for the SA Masters, which uh, Valen touched on in terms of playing in the, in the Sunshine Tour. Uh, what still awaits for you this year? Um, end of November, I'm playing for Malanga Champs. Uh, I'll be defending because I'll be a defending champion because I yeah. won it last year. So that's that's what I'm gonna be working on um, in the next um, a month and a half, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's that's basically that. Mm. Yeah. You like going to these provincial championships and cleaning up there in case it in you nearly won it with yeah. a round of 65 and ended up second. Yeah, I mean. I was a runner-up for two years in a row, okay. so I mean, it's it's always been close. It's always been close. It's like Eastern Province. Um, in 2016 and 17, I was a runner-up. I mean, I lost by one shot in the river, and this year I made sure that like finally it happened. Um, I managed to to win that one. So, I mean, next year it's it's another year. So. I'm just going to keep pushing and I mean, I definitely do want to win KZN and because mm -hmm. um, I've been coming second for so many times. And how does it feel to be entrusted with looking after other young golfers by Sescock at the Youth Olympics? I mean, it's, I'm so honoured eh, to be chosen by, by Sescock to actually go and represent South Africa, um, to manage the SA um, team that will be participating in the Youth Olympics. Mm. I mean, for me, it's it's such a great opportunity to actually be part of that. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I'm so grateful to, to Sascock for giving me that opportunity. We've got two golfers that will represent us in Argentina. What are you expecting from them? Um, it's, it's one girl and one boy. Um, I mean, Kayuri just won now Pumalanga Ach Poland Champs um, this past weekend because we played Poland Champs. Um, in Cape Town. She just won that and I mean I believe that um, she's gonna do well there because she's been playing very well in the couple of months so and Cole um, I mean I haven't seen him playing because I mean I don't I don't follow the boys that much but like I believe that they'll do well. And but, before we wrap it up let's uh, continue giving you the latest stories regarding women in sports and we're looking at Senegal becoming the first African country to win a pool game, beating Latvia 70-69. And of course, uh, Nigeria followed suit after bagging their first win ever in the Women's Basketball World Cup. Well, Nigeria almost blew a 17-point lead before holding off Turkey 74-68. This is Nigeria's second appearance in the World Cup. The last appearance, they didn't win a single match, so that's, that's huge. That's a big improvement. Yeah, big time. All right, so talking about the people doing best at the world stage, how does it still feel, the euphoria? Is it still there doing your best uh, uh, against uh, some of the best golfers in the world, uh, traveling the world? Um, definitely, yeah. So um, I, I, it's something that I enjoy. So, mm. yeah. What is it that you enjoy most about that? I mean, traveling, traveling. You get to to meet new faces, and I mean, I love I love golf. So playing all of these um, golf courses around the world, it's it's for me, it's it's actually a dream come true. How would you describe your golfing style? Mm. Yeah. I don't think I have a style. For me, I just it's. I always take it how it comes, like yeah. I always stick to my game, game plan and, and that's, that's basically how I play.
Uh, I see she's also inspired by, uh, he returned back to a world number one, yeah. uh, Dustin Johnson. Yeah. And he, he's quite a, an aggressive golfer. Yeah. Do, you, do you like that aspect of golf? Definitely, because I mean, a lot of people kind of like look at golf and they're like, oh, it's sweet and calm yeah, and whatever. Yeah. But there are some hugely competitive uh, golfers that we see out on the course. I mean, there are times in golf where you, you have to be aggressive. I mean, not all the time, but like um, sometimes, especially when you're playing match play mm. um, in golf, you, you have to be aggressive. You have to go for everything because, I mean, it's, it's not like you're not focusing on the school. It's only like you're focusing on each hole. So if, if, if you're not playing aggressive, then your opponent is going to take you. And a lot of other golfers have their favorite course, so to speak. Yep. Uh, would you say you have your lucky one or your favorite one at this stage? Um, were you like, my, oh, my okay, favorite Jill. one is Obai in George. Oh, like, yeah, that's, why is that's that? A, I mean, I just like the view, the setup, and like, it's it's always in great condition. So yeah. Like, if there's one golf course that you could play anywhere in the world, what would yeah. it be? I think um, St Andrews, and yeah, that that would be the one. Why? Um, I just I just like it. I just I just like the setup and and um, like. The greens, the sloping of the greens and all of that. For me, I always like, like the challenging course because that's, that's where I always focus more if the course is challenging. And who would you still say you'd like to play in your wildest dream? Uh, let's say there's, a, there's a, te a, world, a world team, let's say the Ryder Cup, for example. And who would you want to be in Zetu's team and why? Um... It doesn't have to be ladies or anything. Ah, just... mix, 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 mix. You can, it yeah. can be even past people. You can yeah. bring them back to life. <laughs> no, I, it would be definitely Dustin Johnson, Shen Shen Fang, and Annie. Wow. Those, those would be... Why? That's an, that's an interesting pick. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, with, um, with Shen Shen Fang, I mean, the way she carries herself on the golf course, I mean, you'll never see her getting angry or anything like that. She's always the same person, which is... that's. That's what I've been working on as a Z2 as well. Because, um, I mean, I feel like on the golf course, um, it's, it's actually great when you're not showing any emotions because mm -hmm. people cannot actually tell when you're playing good or playing bad. So I think, I think that's the secret to golf. And Dustin Johnson, um, sometimes um, he's, he can be aggressive. So um, that's, that's what I do at, at some, sometimes. And I mean, with, with Anne, he has done a lot for, for, mm. for South Africans. And um, the fact that I'm, um, I've been part of the NL and Fengot Foundation. So yeah, that's why that will be my team. Mm. If we have the ladies club in 10 years time, how will we be introducing you sitting there? Mm. In 10 years time, I'll definitely, I'll be a professional golfer living my dream somewhere in the world and, and I think I'll have like um, my golf school because nice. I mean, uh, for me, giving back to the community is is it's I, I just love it. So that's that's basically I think what how you will be introducing me. What message would you have for the young girls looking at you right now, saying she's living our dream and she's still only in her early twenties? Um, for me, if you believe in something, um, if you believe that you want to do something, I always say just go for it. The only limit is yourself. Sure. That is our Game Changer today. Zetu Miyaki, thank you so much for being on The Ladies Club, our Game Changer for this week. Thank you for having me. All right. Wow, what an incredible spirit. I absolutely loved yeah. her energy. Zetu will be keeping an eye on you definitely for the future. Looking forward to what else you have in store for us. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Mona Mokana Lenyaruna Yabubedi on the Ladies Club. Remember, until we meet again, that greatness is earned and never ever given. Thank you so much for watching us and joining us here on SABC2. Goodbye.